Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. I'm gonna to talk today about a, I don't know what you would call it, maybe sort of a novelty in tax planning for the rich today. It is something that can be really effective if you're in the right situation. And if you're not in that situation, well, it's kind of useless to you. However, uh, I think it's something you should really understand if you're one of those people. And that is, how does charity for tax planning work? So at the end of 2021, uh, one of the things I was proud of, we did one of the, it was like a record setting charitable transaction uh, for a client, setting up some, some really cool stuff. And so, yeah, this is like, if you're in the right situation, really, really useful to be able to uh, be involved in. So I'm gonna describe today how it works to use charities for tax planning, where it applies to you, where it doesn't apply to you, and see how it goes from there. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. If you'd like help with international tax optimization, how to pay the lowest legal amount of tax possible, or how to do business internationally, please reach out to us. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so if you start to look at the spectrum of possibilities around tax planning, you obviously can relocate you can set up businesses abroad, you can, you know, there's a variety of different things. But especially if you're somebody who is gonna be located in a high tax country, such as say the US, then charity becomes one of those things as you become a large income earner and a wealthy person. So I'm gonna say right off the bat that, although of course, you know, you can contribute to charity and if you feel that's great, awesome, because it's better to give the money to charity probably than to the government, so take advantage of the write-offs. This being said, what I'm gonna describe here is really targeted more at people who their financial wealth or income or both far surpass their, uh, their needs or their you know, lifestyle wants because charity is not a strategy for optimizing your lifestyle wants, okay? What it is, is it's when you have excess capital that you want to contribute to something else, you can do that in a very tax sheltered way. And the way this effectively works is that uh, you could set up some sort of a charitable foundation. Now, depending on where you are in the world, that may be a literal foundation. Sometimes it's a corporation that is uh, treated as ch having charitable status, like 501c3 in the US. Uh, in other places, you'll sometimes use a trust. So some sort of a legal structure, usually it's actually not a foundation, although it will be called a foundation in many cases. Uh, in other places, it actually literally is a legal structure called the foundation and it will somehow get some sort of charitable status. And depending on where you are, there's different rules around how this charitable status works. But generally speaking, it enables you to make contributions to that uh, foundation. And if it's a private foundation, it usually has less ability than if it's a public foundation. Public foundation will solicit uh, funds from the public and bring it in and you'll get more benefits that way, or at least uh, you'll be allowed to contribute a larger amount of money, et cetera. Generally speaking, if you're contributing cash, it's different than if you're contributing capital in the form of assets to the, uh, to the structure. But again, varies country to country, region to region. So if you're interested in specifics, reach out to us and we can go through it. What this allows you to do is to effectively reduce your taxable income. So it's just a deduction. Now, to be fair, in some certain cases, you can actually get a tax credit for it, which is the best, right? You can get a tax credit, it's, it's fantastic because you can just kind of look at it this way. Let's say that you made $50 million this year and let's say that you're allowed to donate, say 50 uh, or half of that, 50%, so 25 million of it. Then you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna get a deduction for 25 million, but you're still gonna pay tax on the other 25 million, right? So, you know, okay, great. That was 25 million that you didn't have to pay tax on and went into uh, tax sheltered environment, et cetera. And there's lots of benefits that we're gonna talk about in a second of that. But you are gonna be in a situation where there's a limit. You can't just bring your taxes down to zero. Now you can of course take some advantage of this when you're transferring in capital because of the mechanisms, it depends on the country again. But if you can transfer something in without selling it, then that's very interesting because what's the cost basis of it? And maybe you didn't have to realize the gain in the process, et cetera. So there are some interesting things that can take place there. Again, depends on the country. Now, what's 
so, so that's step one is, okay, you reduce the amount of money. And again, this comes into why it is that it's important that you already, you know, you want to actually contribute to something, right? Is, all right, you didn't, like, you reduced your taxable income, but you're not, now that money's going to go towards something. And so the whole point is, well, I was going to put the money towards something anyway, I might as well have more money to put towards it because my taxes are lower. And just to give you some kind of a rough idea, imagine you were going to pay 50% tax and so you donate $25 million in, we well, would have lost half of that $25 million, $12.5 million of it, and only had $12.5 million to do something with. Now you have the full $25 million that you can do something with, which is great, right? It's effectively, the government contributed a whole bunch to your charitable endeavor, which is awesome. And you can, by the way, totally set up your own charity. It can have its own causes, et cetera. There are limitations depending on the country on what types of things you can contribute to, often education, healthcare, arts. These are kind of like three broad categories that you'll often get into. But what's really cool then is that you can contribute that money and you don't have to spend it all or give it all away or whatever immediately. You can then grow it. And typically, in some cases, there can be an unlimited ability to grow that wealth tax sheltered without paying any taxes along the way. And so, yeah, li literally the money can now get invested and the 25 million you put in could turn into 100 million without any tax and you can you know, end up donating 100 million. Now, you typically, again, I keep saying typically because of the fact that, like I said, it does vary country to country, but you're in a situation where you can go and you can have that money there and you could actually even pay out a salary to yourself and you pay tax on that salary because there's gonna be people who are working for the foundation, et cetera. But you typically have to actually be doing something along the way. So the money can't just sit there as this big store of wealth for a bunch of time. Depending on the country, you have like a certain amount that has to be as a minimum distributed each year. Usually it's pretty small, maybe it'll be two and a half percent or something like that but it allows you to uh, continue growing this pot while at the same time continuing to contribute to whatever it is, the cause that you're looking for. So I think for the right people, I really encourage you to use this system. I often say, you know, what are you doing it for, right? Why are you building this wealth? And I think the idea of intergenerational wealth is like, ah, like, you know, people build their own wealth, have their own capabilities, et cetera. The idea that you can do something towards your values today Nobody is going to make your values come to life better than you will, you know? Like, the next person just, they're not you. They're not gonna share your values in the same way. They're gonna have different ideas. And so, what a wonderful thing if, okay, why do you make money? Hopefully to make your life better and to make the lives of other people better. Hopefully, you know, you reach the point where you're like, okay, how much is enough for you for your lifestyle? I don't know, I typically say maybe it's very rare that people are going to top out at more than, you know, a few decamillion, let's say 20 to 40 million or something like that, right? Uh, sometimes a lot lower, obviously. Some people are very happy with a lifestyle that was afforded very simply. That's cool. And then, of course, there's some people who, you know, are really big consumers and that's its own thing. Uh, but, you know, so whatever it is that you have excess, you might as well put over here, right? You might as well say, okay, let's put it into this basket and at least then... I can make it work more productively than if I had kept it over in this non-charitable basket. The other thing to note is that there are some limitations on how much of your income you can put in. And as a result, even if you're thinking I'm going to continue making money, you may want to start gradually contributing over here simply because of the fact that maybe you get to the end and you're like, okay, I'd like to do these donations now and that you're just not able to, right? You're, or you're at least not able to take advantage of the benefits. So. To the extent that you, number one, have enough that you're happy with for your lifestyle and so therefore have excess, number two, are you know in a situation where you're paying taxes, and number three, have something where you think that it would be valuable to contribute to and grow. I think it's a great opportunity to set up uh, some sort of a, a structure that will assist you in this regard and contribute to that charitable purpose earlier and grow the funds in there in a tax sheltered environment and then be able to you know work on whatever this other purpose is so i hope that helps if you have any questions reach out to us and i'm going to look forward to seeing you on the next video